There's many things that can kind of affect the range of your electric car, your electric vehicle, your electric truck, whatever it is. Now, here are six of the things that can affect your EV range. One of them you probably haven't thought about. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Jom Tien in Thailand. We're just on the beach here. It's um, very, very hot here this week. And that's one of the things that can actually influence the range of your EV, the weather temperature. But first of all, speed, weather, the batteries age, driving mode that you use, and climate settings can all have a big impact on the range of your EV. This doesn't mean you'll be unable to start your EV if you have certain settings enabled while it's a cold and rainy day, but it doesn't mean that you'll lose kilometers off your estimated battery range in the wrong situations. For example, if your car does or doesn't have a heat pump could also affect your range as well. Heat pumps enable your car to work more efficiently in cold temperatures. How does speed impact EV range? If you're driving with a lead foot, in other words, if you drive fast, then you're gonna use your range, your battery pack is gonna go down quicker. And before I continue with this one, it's worth considering whether or not your EV has full regen on, or if it even can have full regen. Some cars, you can change the regen setting. You can change how much energy you're sending back into the battery when you brake. So if you're accelerating hard, braking hard. Well, you want to make sure when you're braking, you're sending as much power as you can back into the battery pack. So if your EV comes with a certain regen setting, check if it's on full regen mode because you can potentially send more power to the battery pack. Now, some cars don't have the ability to have full regen at all. So that's something worth considering before you buy it. I often talk about which cars do and don't have this ability in my videos here on the channel. The common adage that electric vehicles are much better for inner city driving at lower speeds than what you drive at on highways and motorways is correct. With regen braking and the amount of stopping you do in a city, along with the distances between charging stations, you're unlikely to see a massive range drop off at lower speeds. In other words, at lower speeds, EVs work really well with getting their claimed range. Faster speeds, not so much. On highways, this changes. EVs have fewer opportunities to have regen energy from braking on highways. They use more battery power to travel at higher speeds. Of course, the wind force becomes stronger as well. Aerodynamics aren't great in this area. So of course, if you've got an EV shaped like a brick, then it's gonna be terrible at highway speeds most likely. How do weather conditions impact EV range? All technology is susceptible to performance losses in the wrong climate conditions and electric vehicles are no different. As noted by Geotab, colder temperatures have a greater impact on electric vehicle range than warmer temperatures. The optimal temperature range for the average electric vehicle is about 21.5 degrees Celsius. But at incredibly cold temperatures, such as minus 15 degrees Celsius, which you may experience in some European countries and North parts of North America and Canada, Efficiency can drop by 54%, effectively halving the range of your vehicle. If you've got a Toyota BZ4X or a Subaru Solterra, yeah, your efficiency in cold climates is going to be disastrous. They, for some reason, are not well made for colder climates, as has been shown in several tests in parts of Europe and in Norway. Now, if you want to drive your car in colder temperatures and get a better range, then you need to make sure your car has a heat pump. The same applies to hot temperatures. In temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius or above, efficiency can drop by around 17%, almost taking a fifth of the range away. This is a more likely problem you're gonna have in countries like Australia, Southeast Asia, India, you know, Africa, Northern Africa, though that's Middle East, those kinds of countries, maybe Spain, California, Phoenix, those sorts of areas. But of course, 35 degrees Celsius and a 17% range decline at worst is not really the worst case scenario. It's really the cold here that could be an issue. So you need to get it, you need to consider what kind of EV you buy in the cold. Now it's well known that Tesla vehicles do have a pretty good range in the cold, and so do some other cars such as the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. What about battery degradation? Does that imp impact your EV range? Well, yes, it does. Some batteries degrade faster than others. Batteries degrade over time depending on the model of car you have 
and they will often lose range as they get older. After 322,000 kilometers, Tesla estimates that its EV batteries lose about 10% of their capacity. Now, as you can imagine, with internal combustion, with a gasoline-powered car, you lose probably even more than that. I mean, I've owned cars with that kind of mileage, and the engines, they're not real efficient. You probably notice you get a pretty significant power drop-off the older the engine is. So this is not something confined just to EVs. However, as reported by EV Connect, electric vehicle owners can expect their vehicles to lose about 2 to 3% of their maximum battery capacity every year. Depending on the battery chemistry, it seems as though lithium iron phosphate batteries, such as those used in the base model Tesla Model Y and the Model 3, the BYD Addo 3, and a few other models of car, get less battery degradation. These losses in battery capacity have, will have an impact on your electric vehicle's range over the long run. As a side note, battery replacements can be very expensive. Depending on the battery you have, some are really expensive, some are actually incredibly affordable, depending on which car. I'll put a link in the description to my video about the actual cost you'll pay to replace the battery. Now, will you have to replace your battery after 10 years of EV ownership? No, there's no EVs sold anywhere in the Western world currently where that is likely to happen, unless you're doing just, maybe if you're doing, say, 100,000 kilometers per year or 60,000 miles per year, but that's extremely, extremely rare. What about driving modes? Does it matter what driving mode you use when you're driving? It does, actually. This is more subtle, but some electric vehicles come with different driving modes depending on the experience you want to have. There's typically a normal mode for the standard experience, or you can click sport mode if you want to drive faster. Now, obviously, if you use sport mode or the racier type modes in your EV, you're going to use more battery power. I think everyone knows this. Now, some dual motor vehicles, such as the Polestar 2, allow you, if you have a dual motor car, to turn off one of the motors, meaning you can actually run the car more efficiently. And this makes a lot of sense. The other thing worth considering, not a lot of people know this, is that for some EVs, when the battery says it has 0% charge left, that's not actually true. For example, almost all Tesla cars have around about 30 to 50 kilometers of range left over, even when the battery pack says 0% left. What about air condition? Does that impact your range? Yes, actually it does. The temperature controls inside your electric vehicle have an impact on range, which is why I made a video about an, some interesting new innovations coming out. One of those is a seat belt. Now the seat belt can warm you really, really well, and it only uses a very small amount of energy because it's a heated seat belt. It's much more efficient than turning on your heaters. When you turn the aircon on and adjust it to your preferred settings, the car will adjust its range estimation to match those settings. And well, sometimes that estimation is correct, sometimes it's not, depends on what car you have. However, the loss in power can be noticeable, or the loss in range can be noticeable. If you turn the air conditioner up, then you can get a range loss of possibly 10%. And if it's cold, the best thing to do is not to turn your heaters on, it's to turn on your seat heater. So if your EV has seat heaters, that's a really good feature because then you can save range. Turn on your seat heater, turn off your heaters, and actually stay warm that way. That's one really good option for colder climates. The other thing worth considering that not many people think about is the color of your car. Now, obviously, if you have white paint, the car will stay cooler. It's obviously true. In, hot, in a lot of hot cities around the world, people routinely paint their houses white, and they'll have a white roof as well in some places to try and keep the house as cool as possible. Now, one final thing that will affect your range drastically, and not a lot of people realize this, and it's a very minor thing which will have a big difference, which will have a big impact on your car's range. That is the size of your wheels. The bigger the wheels, the lower the range. So if you're getting a car and there's an option to get, say, 20-inch wheels versus 19-inch wheels, well, there's really no reason or benefit to the 20-inch wheels. The tires will cost more, and the 20-inch wheel will actually just reduce your range. So there's really no reason to get it. It doesn't make any sense. What this means is opt for a smaller wheel if possible. Now, obviously, if the wheels go to a certain point, like if they go to, say, smaller than 15 inches, it starts to reverse. The range actually starts to get shorter. The optimum size for an EV wheel is somewhere between around 18 inches in terms of the actual rim size. So those are some 
things that can impact the range of your vehicle. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.